Coffee isn't exactly a new thing, the way we're drinking it has certainly changed in the last few years. Whether it's different production techniques, sourcing single origin beans, or trying different brewing methods, coffee enthusiasts know more than ever before. We're in Shoreditch, London, where there's certainly no shortage of trendy coffee houses. It's also home to the fictional Coal Hill School, which is the setting for the upcoming Doctor Who spin-off, Class. here in Workshop Coffee, which mm -hmm. is a roastery in the heart of East London in Bethnal Green. So how does it start, the whole process? How do you source the beans? We've got a trip to Rwanda coming up in a couple of weeks and we're going to go and uh, taste hundreds of bowls of coffee and come back with what we deem the, the best tasting stuff. We try and work with farmers year in, year out. If yeah. there are producers doing a really great job, we want to continue to buy from them. And then when it comes in, what process do you go through to get the best taste from those beans? Well, we have a buying criteria of wanting something that tastes very clean and sweet, and yeah. we want to highlight that with how we then process it here. So the sacks or bricks of coffee will come in. We'll slash the bags open, check the moisture content, do all sorts of logging data on the green coffee. Yeah. Um, we get then, really geeky with it. Oh, hugely geeky. Yeah. It's, it's insanely <laughs> geeky. We will then uh, have one of our roasters loaded into the top of the roaster, yeah. load it into the drum when it's very, very hot, and then change the gas set Settings. And, and basically you've got a cement mixer with a burner pad underneath yeah. and how much gas you're applying is like changing the gas on your hob. Oh, okay. and, we, and we try and replicate a roast recipe. Throughout its history, coffee has come to most people through the coffee house or cafe, a social space where the conversation is as important as what's being brewed, or at least that used to be the case. Now there are still hangouts of course, but also temples for coffee adoration. We're here in Origin talking to Dan, barista expert, about how that translates into a great cup of coffee. I guess the barista is the last step in a long chain, trying to fulfil the potential that the coffee has. There's a lot of hard work gone into creating a great cup of coffee before me, so my job is to just best represent that, I guess, yeah. so in a friendly, you know, a nice way. And I guess coffee's gone from something that you enjoy in the morning and now it's something that you can enjoy in the evening as well in the form of a cocktail. Sure. So your G&T has gone to a, a C and T. A lot better than the vodka from Red Bull. Um, <laughs> that is true. I think there's a lot more to coffee cocktails than just espresso martinis and Irish coffees as well. grind to talk how coffee has gone from not just a morning perk but to something that can be enjoyed in the evening as well and particularly I want to talk about nitro coffee which is like one of the biggest trends in coffee right now. Yeah so this right? is nitro cold brew so cold brew is not okay. coffee that's gone cold which sometimes people think it is. Uh, basically pour that draft like Guinness with nitrogen coming through it which gives it that creamy head Amazing. that just gives it that texture. So that's what I've got here. Yeah. I'm gonna try some. That is creamy. That's really nice. London is a melting pot of culture and with that comes influences from around the world and especially when it comes to coffee. So I'm enjoying this Turkish coffee which tastes amazing. This Turkish coffee is prepared over a large flame in a tin pot, also known as a jezbe. My coffee journey today has taken me further afield than I could have imagined, and it just shows how much Shoreditch has to offer, especially when it comes to coffee. To watch more, click here. To subscribe, click here. Follow us on social and check out the Anglophenia blog too. See ya.